Welcome back if you came from the first video and if you're new, leave your shoes by the door. There's milk and cookies on the table down the hall to your left. We're just gushing over the Looney Tunes here, you know, respecting the classics and all that. The first video was all background and season 1 stuff, but for the second video, let's have fun with the characters. You don't have to look too hard to see that things got significantly brighter and more colourful in season 2. I'd say that Bugs and Daffy got a home makeover but the changes extended into the rest of the world so there isn't an in-canon justification for this. Let me know if you come up with one yourself. Season 2 started out strong with serious back-to-back -back banger episodes. The first 8 will definitely hook you but I promised a different video from the first one so we'll talk about the characters first. Then at the end, I'll break down one of the best written episodes across both seasons. Sound good to you? Cool. Let's get into it. Starting of course with Bugs. I talked about how he's been the poster boy for the Looney Tunes, but the bunny got a very well-rounded personality on this show. I think they were still figuring things out at the beginning, so his greatness was still exaggerated quite a bit. Like the eligible bachelors episode that I touched on before, where this human man was auctioned for $200, but the women were throwing out $4,000 bids for Bugs. Unless they were exotic food psychopaths who wanted to make Bugs Bunny stew, that made no sense. Unless... No. This is a family channel. But as the show went on, they started giving him flaws and misfortunes, and making him the source of a lot of the problems that fell on him. And his flaws were consistent, which made his personality feel very real, with the main one being his addiction issues. This was manifested across the two seasons in various ways. Throughout the show, Bugs started being addicted to coffee, and then later he got addicted to this weird illegal drink that Yosemite Sam was selling. He also got into some very unhealthy food that Porky was making, and he couldn't stop himself from eating it until he got really overweight. It also turned out that the white glass gloves that he wears control his personality, so he was very dependent on them to feel normal. The moment he lost the gloves, he turned into someone else entirely. He also got addicted to playing this video game and just in general, Bugs had a lot of addiction issues and I loved that they gave him such nuance. They could easily have taken the cheap route and made him Mr. Perfect, but they went for a more rounded character which was the better choice. As I also mentioned in the first video, Bugs' relationship with Lola's parents was great and I enjoyed how they built on it much more in season 2. The Father Figures episode that had both Bugs and Daffy's Father Figures competing against each other was such a fun contrast. It featured the return of Lola's dad and the rooster. Bugs and Daffy were both pseudo-adopted by these two tycoons through some Father Figures program, with the two of them being different reflections of Bugs and Daffy. Bugs' father figure was old money and bougie like Richard Gilmore, while Daffy's father figure seemed very country and new money, and he had very little class. Daffy was a savage. Isn't it funny how you're always available, no matter how last second, and you never have other plans? Like you don't really have a life. <laughs> you look, they look nice. They're gonna even look nicer on your face when I go up for a rim-rattling jam. He also started out like Bugs with the default template influenced by the older cartoons where he was a loser. In the words of Bugs, You're a narcissist? You're a sociopath? You're probably a psychopath? You're paranoid, sexist, and you make fun of the elderly. But as the show went on, they seemed to figure out his character more and gave him more nuance. The failing upwards that I mentioned in the previous season continued here. He was still selfish and horrible for the most part. Those are just quirks! Endearing quirks! But he was so charismatic that you actually enjoyed this aspect of his personality. He said things that were harsh truths or things that others would be afraid to voice out even though they were true. On multiple occasions, he warned Bugs about issues related to other characters like Yosemite Sam and Porky. And Bugs argued with him all the time because he thought he was being rude. But later on, he would come around to realizing that Daffy was right. Daffy was actually a solid judge of character on the show and very socially intelligent, so all his rude moments were just because he really didn't care. I'm not crazy, I just don't give a darn. But Daffy's strongest trait in my opinion was his dedication to anything that he fell into. He always landed on extreme ends of the spectrum, either completely apathetic and lazy or completely invested and dedicated to the thing that he fell into. Whether it was working as a cosmetologist or a babysitter or a college professor or an air hostess or a city councilman or even a marine. And he was quite good at most of those things which made him more likable. Everybody likes a capable and passionate person. The one he wasn't so good at was managing a call center where he fired all the staff. <laughs> 
but I really liked how they referenced all his previous jobs in his resume. You were the CEO of Enormicorp? He went from having zero work experience in season one to being considered overqualified for a manager position in that episode. It was also funny how he kept asking, What happened to this country? What happened to this country? No one hustles anymore. That's why Canada's killing us these days. That kind of reinforcement of a character's outlook on the world is always a great touch. Unsurprisingly, some of my favorite episodes centered around him, but his savagery came off as racist in other episodes. <laughs> Especially towards Speedy and later Porky, when he was running against Porky for a city council position. But overall, Daffy was always my favorite character, and in spite of all his quirks, he was very caring in a lot of other moments, like the liking he took towards Gossamer, and how far out of his way he went to help him with his school problems. But closing out Daffy, the end of the Dear John episode where he faked his death was a massive highlight for me. But there are just too many others to mention, so just watch the show. Back off! Oh boy. You wanna fight? Uh oh, he wants to fight. But Bugs and Daffy's friendship was also really realistic because it started out rough in season 1, but as it went on, they started to really complement each other's limitations. Daffy wasn't pathetic like Alan from Two and a Half Men. He came into his own as far as their friendship was concerned, and you understood why Bugs stayed friends with him and didn't kick him out. Switching over to Lola, she was very sweet and lovable, and a genuine badass who would do anything for Bugs. She had no ounce of pretense and said some of the most savage things herself, but they were always in service of humor and endearing the audience to her. Speedy, we're adults, okay? Adults live on their own. Where did you live? With my parents. I won't lie, when she initially appeared, she had some major She belongs to the streets energy, but she came around and redeemed herself very well. It's like she always had random moments of maturity and intelligence that would sneak out and then get smothered immediately by her weirdness. She also developed a really fun relationship with Daffy of the blind leading the blind. She had a brief crush on him before she started dating Bugs and later on, they became a really funny dynamic duo in the Itsy Bitsy Gopher episode. Such a fun episode that I saw someone online refer to as Daffy and Lola sharing one brain cell. There were a lot of really funny moments in that episode that you should either check out or revisit if you've forgotten it. Overall, Lola and Bugs made the cutest couple with all the chemistry in the world. And Porky is just a cannibal. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But kinda not. Throughout the show, he tended to be mostly lonely and pathetic and had a lot of problems. But fortunately for him, money was never one of them. You got a lot of money, Porky. There were so many subtle moments of shade that were thrown towards Porky by the other characters. But after seeing his high school history that I referenced in the previous video, we can chalk all these incidents up to karma. Porky was always so good-natured about his misfortunes, so you didn't feel too bad for him. And you didn't hate him either. He just played that role as the butt of a lot of jokes and he played it well. Also, he was the one chasing a lot of this relationship with the other characters, so you could argue that he signed up for the disrespect. <laughs> but that said, it was nice that we got an episode where Daffy went to group therapy, and he came back and apologized to Porky and was being very intentional about being kind to him in that episode. Also, Porky's success rate with the ladies was not bad, so... You know, you can't feel too bad for him. Meanwhile, Speedy was a tiny bit of a douche who only respected Bugs, but I think Daffy was too much of a savage for him to try and violate. They had this great episode together in The Stud, The Nerd, The Average Joe, and The Saint. I really wish I could get into that episode because it was so well written, but there just isn't enough time. Speedy was generally a hustler and a hard worker, which I think was a nod to his Mexican immigrant status that they referred to a couple of times. There were a lot of cross-cultural references that pointed to that. You gotta keep up with the Joneses. Who? The Joneses, you know, the competition. The Joneses. That's what I say. I actually had a similar experience in South Africa where the lady who was serving me got really mad at me, but I honestly couldn't understand her at first because she had a heavy accent and she was talking really fast. Anyway, initially Speedy was just a rat in Bugs' house. For the last time, man, I'm a mouse! Who would act as Daffy's conscience. But once Bugs gave him this restaurant, he became very regular on the show and there was a lot more opportunity to feature him in the episodes. 
Speedy did not respect Porky one bit, and the source of the disrespect from what I could see was pure shallowness. Porky wasn't good looking to him, which he mentioned several times, so he didn't value him as much as he valued Bugs. But even then, he had a moment of redemption with Porky in season 2, but that was only because Porky became useful to him. You're a genius! He was self-admittedly very competitive and brash, but when dealing with characters like Daffy and Yosemite, who could blame him? The funniest episode was when he fell for this girl, who turned out to be Bugs wearing a wig and a dress. I think that was the first time the show cut him back down to size, and it was so funny to me because Speedy had already built out a shrine and was ready to propose to her. Poor, poor Speedy. As for Yosemite Sam, he was really just an insecure wimp who liked to pretend that he was a tough guy. This man had a lot of audacity. But I found him very fun in all the episodes he was featured in because he was greedy and rude, but a different kind of greedy and rude from Daffy. It was a bit like Tony Stark and Doctor Strange, where both were arrogant, but a different kind of arrogant. But just like Daffy, Sam was a lot more nuanced than that, and he called out things that he thought were going a bit too far, like Bug's addiction to all that buttery food that Porky was making. There's too much butter in that food. It's flat out unhealthy. You ought to lay off that kind of food yourself. You don't look so good. So you knew he had a conscience somewhere beneath that gruff exterior. Almost all the very flawed characters on this show had an episode that allowed them a shot at self-improvement, and some had one of the funniest episodes. <laughs> I won't say anything more. Go and watch that episode. It's called You Got Hate Mail. Tina was also a savage, and that's why her and Daffy got along so well. No unnecessary feelings or emotions, and I've met girls like her, and they like guys who are rough around the edges and say what's on their mind with no sugarcoating and no pretense, which explains Daffy. But as savage as Daffy could be towards her, it was episodes like Daffy Duck Esquire, where Tina's dad was visiting, and it showed how much Daffy cared about her, because he really went out of his way to impress her father. But Daffy and Tina were just a great couple, and the complete opposite of Bugs and Lola. Another amazing, and I mean a truly amazing decision on this show was Cecil. Cecil was just pure evil. This creature just lived to make others miserable and he had major online troll or even incel energy. He was also a grifter and a criminal who really spiced up season 2. You never really see a character like him coming and he was actually quite scary in the shell game episode where he tried to extort Bugs and Porky. It's actually kind of crazy how much this show got away with so many guns in genuinely tense situations in a kids show. I only say that because we're living in soft times. And speaking of soft, Mark and Tosh, who I know sound like the computer, seemed to be on a sugar high every time you saw them and it was always so funny. The rambling and the giggling and the low concern for their own personal safety made them look a little nuts, but it was always good fun. Look at this little psychos. <laughs> As for Dr. Weisberg, he reminded me of our family pediatrician who has treated two generations of kids in our family. He was patient and calm and wise, and his inability to get phased by Bugs and Daffy and Yosemite and all these other ridiculous characters who showed up at the hospital made him very likable. He was always just so chill regardless of what was going on. That made the hospital scenes favorites of mine, and that's saying something because I hate being in hospitals. And finally, Sylvester had mommy issues. That's all I'll say about him. <laughs> so I had credited the writing on this show in my previous video for being very clever, with divergent storylines coming together in the end. In terms of setup and payoff, Semper Lai has to be the best episode across both seasons. If anyone is hesitant to watch this show, this is the episode I'd recommend to give them. They should actually use this in writing classes as an example of excellence in storytelling. I've even used this formula myself in some of my own writing, but I won't get into that. I almost don't want to ruin this episode for anyone who hasn't seen it, but here we go. The episode opens with Daffy receiving a call soliciting for help from the mayor's re-election campaign, to which he lies that he isn't a US citizen and shouldn't get involved in American politics. Bugs scoffs at this because Daffy is obviously lying. The caller asks where Daffy is from and Kaiser Soze, I mean, Daffy sees the newspaper that Bugs is holding talking about spies in Albania and lies that he's from Albania. Bugs then remembers that an annual peach festival that he usually attends with Porky is that weekend and he doesn't want to go because it's never a pleasant experience. Daffy tells him to lie but Bugs says that he doesn't lie. That's Daffy's area. Daffy agrees and says that Bugs should know his role. 
Daffy says if he was in Bugs position, he would say that he's an alien. Bugs then asks why the alien can't go to the Peach Festival and Daffy is irritated and says nobody would ask that because all Porky would be thinking about is that he's an alien. That was apparently supposed to be one of those lies that Daffy thought would stump him. So Daffy leaves and Bugs gets a call from Porky about the Peach Festival and the talk with Daffy seems to have sunk in. So Bugs lies to Porky that he would be doing something with Lola. Porky says to invite Lola and Bugs says he can't because he's helping Lola move. Porky understands and Bugs thinks he's gotten away with it. Porky bumps into Daffy and invites him to the Peach Festival and Daffy says that he can't go because he's an alien. Porky asks if the alien wants to go to the Peach Festival and Daffy is irritated, wondering who would ask a question like that, just like the scenario he was painting with Bugs. Daffy says that he thought Porky was going with Bugs to the Peach Festival, to which Porky replies that Bugs is helping Lola to move. Daffy then assumes that Bugs wants Lola to move in with him, which means Daffy might have to move out. This is obviously a misunderstanding because Daffy doesn't know that Bugs has lied to Porky. Porky then unexpectedly meets Bugs and Lola and the whole lie falls apart. Bugs is forced to change the lie from Lola is moving to Viola is moving, Viola being his made up sister. Porky and Lola are so excited to meet his fictional sister that they cancel all their plans to help with the move. Bugs is caught off guard and reluctantly makes up an address which happens to be in a bad neighborhood. Once Porky leaves, Bugs tells Lola the truth but she doesn't believe him because she knows that Bugs doesn't lie. She thinks Bugs is just being insecure about his sister. Daffy tries to move in with Tina because he thinks Bugs wants him out, but she says she's not living with anyone until she's married. Very conservative, Tina. On the other side, Bugs needs furniture for the fake move, so he takes all the furniture from Daffy's room. Daffy comes home and realizes that he's probably overreacting about the whole thing, but when he gets to his room, all his stuff is gone, which confirms his suspicions about Bugs kicking him out. Lola and Porky meet with Bugs to help him with the move and Lola starts asking a lot of questions that Bugs really doesn't appreciate. <laughs> Please watch the episode, this scene is hilarious. Porky and Lola want to go to Viola's new house but Bugs says that they can't see her house because she's moving to Albania. Things are now coming full circle from Bugs judging Daffy in the beginning to him using the same lie himself. This fake move ends up costing him over a thousand dollars and the shipper asks him if he wants a peach. Daffy who now believes he's homeless joins the marines. Porky and Lola go over to Bugs house uninvited to meet Viola before her flight to Albania. Bugs asks Speedy to call him and pretend to be Viola who is stuck at work and will not be home soon. Speedy is disappointed and tells Bugs that he expects such behavior from Daffy but not him. He says it will snowball and Bugs says it already has. Speedy then tells him to know his role, which is a recurring theme so far. Bugs kicks them out and hopes that he's done with this whole charade because it's already gone much farther than he expected. Meanwhile, Daffy is now at the Marines and starts training. Bugs gets a call in the middle of the night from Porky and Lola who are at the airport waiting to see Viola off. Bugs realizes it would have been better if he was just at the Peach Festival. Bugs dresses up as a girl and goes to meet Porky and Lola while pretending to be Viola. He claims that Bugs stayed behind because he struggles with goodbyes. Lola and Porky decide to wait for the flight to take off, so Bugs is forced to take the flight to Albania. Bugs arrives in Albania cross-dressed as Viola, and one look at his passport gets him thrown in jail, because they think he's a spy. You know, from the newspaper in the first scene of the episode. Daffy continues training with the Marines and gets really good at it, after a whole year in an Albanian prison. The Marines break in and rescue Bugs. One of the Marines turns out to be Daffy, I mean obviously. And now Bugs and Daffy's divergent paths through the whole episode have come full circle. They have a brief conversation where they clear everything up and Daffy tells him that lying is not his area and that he should KNOW YOUR ROLE! So that right there was just writing perfection with callbacks galore. But there's still a cherry on top. Bugs gets back home. Porky and Lola want to know what happened to him and he says it's a long story, to which Porky says that's great because he can tell them on the way to the Peach Festival, which was taking place that weekend. Bugs arrived home just in time for it. <laughs> Bugs arrived just in time for it. <laughs> Let me tell you, the first time I watched that episode and got to that punchline, I was on the floor. There really wasn't a single scene or a line of dialogue that was wasted in that episode. And forget about my narration, go watch it yourself. 
There were so many jokes that I didn't even mention that were contextual to each scene. But man, how the whole narrative was constructed and all the separate pieces brought together in the end in such a satisfying way was just amazing, man. This is goat levels of cartoon writing. And I have the people you can see on your screen to thank for that. Hugh, Rachel, Larry, you guys are awesome. Thanks for writing such a classic episode. I can't tell you how many times I've watched it. And I can honestly make a hundred videos about this show, but I think I should just end it here. I was only able to mention about 15% of what was great in this show because it's so much greater than what I've rambled on for however long this video is at this point. And you're doing yourself a disservice if you intentionally skip it. The amount of warmth and kindness and care and humor that all the characters had with each other, even those who seemingly didn't get along on the surface, is something that I haven't seen done quite like this before. And how they actually enjoyed things and used things that were in their world. It made it feel like such a real place and nothing was superfluous. And something I didn't even mention in the previous video was how they had very defined locations in the show, which gave every scene a sense of place and made the town feel like a real place that you could get immersed in. In the words of one of my favorite Aussie podcasts, best show ever. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about the whole thing and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Malfakura. His name is Malfakuratai. Is this the name on the back of the jacket? Yes, that's it. Malfakuratai. You fool, this says Mal Security.